All right. So what we're going to do is the next chapter. Now we're going to look at chapter uh, 17. And what we're going to do is look at um, protein synthesis. Basically, we're going to we're going to go from a DNA molecule to, um, to, to to making a protein. So what we want to do with this first recording uh, is we want to look at kind of the overview, the, the overview process here. So what's going on? And so what we want to do is look at uh, protein synthesis, and it's really divided into two major steps. And then these steps obviously have multiple steps underneath them. Uh, but what you want to know is transcription, um, to transcribe something means to copy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy something from DNA into messenger RNA, both being nucleic uh, acids as a language. And this occurs in the nucleus because that's where your DNA is. So pretty simple. Um, the next term is translation. Uh, so this will be the second process. And then translation is going to take the messenger RNA, which will leave the nucleus and then go into um, the uh, cytoplasm. And, and that occurs at the, at the ribosome level. Uh, the, and messenger RNA is there going to be read by transfer RNA. Uh, which is then going to bring in the correct amino acids to make our protein. Okay, so again, uh, transcription is happening in the nucleus, translation is happening in the cytosol at the ribosomes. Uh, transcription is going from DNA to messenger RNA, and then translation is going to take that messenger RNA, read it with transfer RNA, and then bring in the proper amino acids. All right, what do you need to know? Okay, uh, there are some terms you need to know. So um, it turns out that we have discovered that uh, DNA is written in groups of three. Uh, these are called triplets, um, kind of a general term, uh, but a better term for certain molecules are codons. Okay, so what you need to know is there is a template strand and a non-template coding strand and so in messenger RNA, that group of three is called a codon. Uh, the non-template coding strand will also be called a codon in DNA. So both in DNA and messenger RNA, we have these triplets called codons. Uh, what you're also going to find, though, is there's going to be another group of three, another triplet uh, using transfer RNA, and those are going to be called anticodons, so uh, a slightly different name. All right, and this is the magical messenger RNA coding for particular um, amino acids. And so this table, um, I need you to kind of know, and let me explain that. Um, I need you to know that this messenger RNA, UUU, uh, will actually code for phenylene. Now, now here's what you need to know. Don't memorize this. I, I don't know it, uh, and I don't need you to know it. Um, but I need you to know how to work it. Um, so what I need you to know is when UUU shows up on a messenger RNA, this will be the amino acid that the transfer RNA brings in. So the anticodons would be AAA. That AAA would be attached to a phen phenylene. And then this would be a hooked on there, and that would be what's brought in. Um, okay, and you can see that there's there's uh, a, a grouping of 64. What, what I need you to understand is why groups of three? Um, why not groups of two? Why not just read by one? Now, if you think about it, the English language has millions of millions and millions of words, um, how many letters? Well, we have 26 letters and how we make words is we combine those in, in different combinations. Uh, so if DNA was actually only read in groups of two um, and you have four different amino acids, or I'm sorry, um, nucleic acids, uh, that would only give you 16 combinations and 16 combinations is not enough to make and code for 20 amino acids. So what happens is it has to be done in groups of three, and that would give you a combination of 64, which gives you plenty uh, to code for the 20 amino acids. Well, uh, so what you end up with, if you look here closely, is that you have multiple ones that, that actually um, code for the same thing. 
you know, like our um, arginine uh, here, you can see there's actually six different coatings for that. Um, and then um, some have just four. Uh, so, so that's important. Okay. So I need you to be able to read the table. Um, uh, we're going to do this in lab. I'm uh, going to do it on a quiz, going to do it in, on a test is where uh, I'm going to ask you how something is coded. Um, what I do want you to memorize is the white boxes. Uh, AUG is the start codon that needs to be there to start. Um, and uh, uh, that actually codes for methanine. Uh, then you can also see the three stop codons, UAA, UAG, UGA. Um, that basically will terminate protein synthesis. Okay, so I need you to know those four in white, memorize those. All right, what else do I need you to know? I also need you to know um, that if you look at this, uh, there's something called wobble. And what you're going to find is that this third nucleotide is probably the least important. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's the least important of, of the grouping. Because like for serine, for instance, um, you can see with the UCU, C, A, and G on the end there, it doesn't matter. Uh, UC and whatever it is is going to give you the same amino acid. Uh, we call this wobble. Um, that it can wobble between one or the other. So W-O-B-B-L-E. Um, so I do want you to know that also. Okay, so the least important one probably is that fourth one. Again, red in groups three, all three have to be there. Um, but sometimes that fourth one doesn't really matter which, one, which letter is there. It will, it will put the same amino acid in its place. All right, and with that, we'll stop with, with the basics.